Hello, it's Ben with the DIY Homefront. It's a little overcast and windy today, so I'm not sure how our filming conditions will be. But we are working on the lawnmower. My front wheels are all wonky, so let's get into this. Well, let's draw a couple images of my lawnmower. I've got back tires and a lawnmower body. And a steering wheel and a seat and two front wheels and I'm exaggerating but my front wheels used to bow out and I thought it was because I had ran the lawnmower into a big tree or something and that I had bent something in the suspension that made it go out well I was lucky enough to find something online that had some adjustment in it so last season before I put the lawnmower up, I put some new steering links on there that had some adjustments and I was able to straighten my wheels up so that they both went in the forward direction. And then the first time I cut grass, I ran into another problem. Every time I would back up, my wheels would do this. So here's my actual lawnmower and you can see how the one wheel is straight and when I go to the other side how it's not straight and this only happens when I back up. So I think what had happened is um, I did end up with this scenario where my wheels were fanned out but it wasn't because the steering link was out of line or something was bent I think it was because there was a bunch of wear on the components and let me try to show you what what I think is happening my tires on my front lawnmower are connected to an axle and that axle has these little triangle pads that are part of the linkage that go to the steering wheel and the axle has bushings in it on each side and I believe what has happened is the bushings are worn out which means there's play in the front tire on the axle so the front tire can do a little bit of jiggling on the front axle and these little triangles they're held in place. I never knew it, but there's a grease fitting for them. I've never greased them the entire time I've had my lawnmower. But I believe that is wallowed out, which means there's a little bit of play that there shouldn't be. And here's that triangular piece that's part of the steering assembly. And you can see how much it moves, and I think that is contributing to the misalignment of the front wheels. So I went online and they sell new bushings for the lawnmower wheels and they were relatively cheap but I found some that were actually ball bearings I'm gonna replace those on each wheels and all these little tiny pieces let's see $21 $21 I want to say the axles were 50 because there's actually wear on the metal axles 50 50 and I want to say the bushings and stuff like that were like 10 anyway to buy this whole thing turned out to be pretty pricey and some of the parts I was wanting like that little screw there it was on back order so I ended up going on eBay and ordering a whole new front axle so let's take a look at that look here's our box and here's our new axle My axle had a lot of wear, so I bought a kit that replaces the bushings with ball bearings. And I don't know, do you see how there's play in that? I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. Mine has a lot of play there. 
like I said, a hundred bucks online, you can't beat that. That's probably $300 worth of parts if you were to order them separately. The front axle is held onto the lawnmower with just one bolt. To get to that bolt, we're going to have to remove this protective cover for the muffler and the muffler itself. There's only these two bolts that hold on the protective cover for the muffler. As much as possible, I will put the bolts back in the holes they came out of. It just makes it easier to keep track of everything. Normally to remove the hood, you have to disconnect a plug for the headlights, but my headlights were already disconnected. The muffler is only held on with two screws and it will fall to the ground once you remove them. This bolt connects the steering mechanism to the front wheel and there's one on each side that I will have to remove. And you'll have to use two wrenches to remove this linkage. If you just turn the nut on top it will just spin and spin and spin and never come off. Once again I put the lock washer and the nut back where it came from. You can take this bolt out without jacking up the lawnmower because gravity is going to hold the axle in place. But this bolt was extremely difficult to get out. I had to put another wrench on it like a cheater before I could get the power wrench to remove the bolt. I used a piece of wood so that I could jack it up high enough for the axle to fall out but then it didn't fall out and I realized the attachment that holds the mower deck in place was binding up. So I removed that and it fell to the ground and the axle fell to the ground at the same time. Next I removed the pivot joint before I started working on the tires. There's a rubber dust cover that has to come off and then you can get to the e-clip that holds the wheel on. After that pops off and you get the greasy washer out of the way the rim and the tire will slide off the steel axle. And the steel axle, as I feel it, actually has some wear marks in it. And the steel shouldn't wear down. It should be these bushings on the rim that wear down first. Well, let's see what the other axle looks like. We'll remove the dust cover and the E-clip and go from there. Can you see how much play is in there? a lot of play in it can you see how it's wore down right there I think that was causing some of the slop and those had excessive wear I had never greased that once I didn't realize I was a grease fitting okay before I do anything else I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up so there's two grease fittings on each side and I'll hook the grease gun up to it and give it a couple pumps until I start to see the grease squeeze out. After that I'll stop and on this side I'll go ahead and put that cover on so I don't get grease everywhere. And I'll do the same thing again. I will hook up the grease gun, give it a couple pumps and look for the grease to squeeze out between one of the fittings. Then I'll wipe as much of the excess off as I can and do the other side. Popping this cover on means that both sides are well greased and that means I shouldn't have to worry about the parts wearing down. The next thing to do is to struggle lifting the axle back up in place, pushing in the bolt, and then go on to the other side to put in the bracket that holds up the mower deck. This might be one continuous clip on video, but it took me several attempts and quite a few minutes to get this accomplished. And now the washer and the nut will go on. I'll go ahead and tighten this nut all the way down and our axle will be permanently attached to the lawnmower again. Next I'll take the steering linkage that goes from the steering wheel and attach it to the assembly that actually turns the front axles. And I'm only going to hand tighten these. I mainly want to do this to keep the front axle from moving around while I try to mount the tire and the rim. I was having a really hard time trying to get these bushings out. And the bushings have to come out because they're worn. I'm going to replace them with those sealed bearings that I had purchased. I've been trying to knock these bushings out of both these rims for about five minutes. So it is time to move on to plan B. As Jeremy Clarkson would say, we need power! And when I say power, I mean I'm going to use my reciprocating saw 
with a metal saw blade to cut through the bushings. That should allow me to be able to beat them out. So when you smoke that you see is actually from the blade being so hot that it's burning the grease that's inside the wheel hub. In the end this idea worked but in no way was it easy or fast. It still took quite a while and a quite a bit of work to cut through these bushings. After I got the bushings out I had to spend a few minutes with a rag trying to get all the old grease out from inside the wheel hubs. I even had to use some engine degreaser to break up the old caked on grease. So once I had the wheels all cleaned up, it was time to install the sealed bearings that I had purchased. So I started by test fitting one of the bearings over the axle shaft to make sure that they would fit. Once I knew the bearings were the right size, I took a hammer and gently tapped them into place on both rims. I am really looking forward to seeing how these sealed bearings do. It'll be nice not to have to worry about greasing the axles. It'll be nice not to have the mess that comes with greasing the axles. And there should be a lot less rolling resistance with sealed bearings than there is with the bushings that come with the mower. The wheel and rim assembly go back on just like they normally would. There's a washer that slides on and then the rim butts up against that. To hold the rim onto the axle on the outside, first a small washer goes on, followed by a larger washer that holds the dust cover, and that's held in place by the E-clip. And the E-clip can be a little bit tricky to get back on. If you're not careful, it'll shoot off in some direction and you'll lose it. It's a good thing that the bearing kit comes with new washers and new e-clips and new dust covers. The wheels definitely roll a lot better with those sealed bearings. Now that the front wheels are on I can go ahead and attach this rod that holds up the front of the mower deck. I'll go ahead and tighten up the nut that attaches the front wheel steering mechanism to the steering wheel. I'll have to do this for both of the front wheels. <clears throat> well, I'm getting excited. We almost have this put back together. There's two bolts that will attach the muffler to the frame. And once these are tightened up, I can put on the lawnmower's hood. And then there's the two bolts that hold on the muffler cover. Well, there we go. Another one's in the can, so to speak. I hope this fixes the problem. I'll have to use it to find out for sure. But I've already got an idea for that axle I took off too. Well, until the next time, like, subscribe, check out those playlists, and I'll see you in the next video.